<laughs> All right. And welcome, everybody. This is Rob Garcia, the Warrior Strategist, coming at you from San Diego, California. And today we have a very interesting interview with an old friend of mine that I uh, actually met in person at the MIC conference in, uh, in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago. We welcome Daniel Curry from Indy's IT department. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, not a problem. I was super excited about this. I'm glad you could free up your schedule um, because this has been long overdue. Uh, you've always been a, a friend of the magazine. You helped me out through a tough time in my own uh, computer setup. And so today I wanted to just bring you on and go over like a little mini training um, and go over some scenarios for business owners and entrepreneurs especially, uh, help educate them in um, defending their systems and keeping them healthy and upright. And I can't, I can't think of a better person than, to, than you to uh, help us, help us uh, get educated on something we take for granted until we have to uh, not take it for granted. So um, right out the gate, I want to give a big shout out to Maxwell Soaps. Uh, Palacios has done a great job in promoting Maxwell Soaps and uh, getting out an amazing product, including these awesome shirts. So huge shout out to uh, Maxwell Soaps, Don't Be Nasty. Um, wonderful veteran owned company giving out uh, supplies and donating to the cause for the homeless and for veterans that need hygiene products. So uh, unbelievably proud to uh, promote them. So Joe does an incredible job. Absolutely. And uh, we'll give a fast shout out to Kurt Ballish at Ballish Woodworks. Today is his birthday and uh, I, already, I already texted him a, a happy birthday. So, you know, someone's near and dear to our hearts. So let's uh, jump into it. So let's start off, Daniel. How long have you been doing uh, computer systems and management? Well, um, I built my first computer when I was 11. And they weren't modular then like they are now, you know, swapping out video cards and such. It just had a little numeric display and played Lunar Lander on it until, uh, until a sibling turned off the power. <laughs> but it was too late. I was already hooked. Um, so, you know, I'm 53 now. I was 11 then. So... Yeah, I've been playing with computers in one level of uh, uh, sport or professional for uh, 40 odd years now. That's amazing because you're actually at almost the perfect time in history uh, for the evolution of the computer. You know, I'm a little younger, but I remember TRS 80s and, um, you know, the old school Ataris and ColecoVision video game systems, but also computing systems and, you know, ancient programming languages like DOS. So you or actually, basic. what's that? Or BASIC. Yeah, or basic, exactly. And so you, I think that's what I think your real value is as, as a business owner and entrepreneur is that you have gone through the evolution from the beginning, you know, like the greats, like you, you've been right there um, growing as the, as the technology improves. So I think that's something that's really uh, beneficial to people that, that work with you. Um, so what is your exact specialty? Well, the IT industry is a lot like the medical industry. You look at doctors, they, you know, you, you've got a doctor who specializes in hands, another that uh, specializes on your head, and then another doctor that specializes on what's inside your head, physically or mentally, you know, psychologists, brain surgeons and such. But the IT industry is exciting in the fact that it has specialists too. Uh, you've got a you've got people who specialize in databases. You've got people who specialize in creating programs. Other people who specialize in in security, like cybersecurity. That's a big buzzword these days. And these people all specialize in their little niche, and they're the expert on those things. If we're going to stay with the medical analogy, I'm more like your family practitioner doctor. You bring everything to me first. I help you get the right expert if that's what you need. But I've also been doing this long enough, we really don't always have to call an expert yeah. unless it's a really deep thing. I can set a bone, so to speak, and we can move forward with that. But my real specialty where I enjoy what I do is the small, very small or micro business the one man to shop to 30 seats. Okay. These people are struggling just to grow a business, to make a living and take care of their family, to build the future they want. 
And now they're having to deal with technology in ways that they never thought about, don't have an understanding of, and it's distracting and detracting them from what they have a passion for, which is their own business. Right. You know, taking, uh, taking Joe as, a, as an anonymous example there, he makes soap. He loves doing it. He loves giving that to people who need it and will use it. But he doesn't necessarily know how to build and manage a, a mailing list to go out to people. And that's where I can help the small business so that they can get back to concentrating on their passion and what they do best. I love it. Um, do you do websites or computer builds? Um, generally speaking, not much. Um, you know, if somebody asked me to and the, the numbers were right, yeah, I'd go ahead to. But generally speaking, for business purposes, we really don't want custom computers for most positions. And as far as websites, there are people who do much better than I can because they're graphic designers, they're experienced in that. But at the same time, I do help give back to the veteran community. Mm -hmm. We've got a veteran who's going down and starting an entrepreneurial path. We'll work together. I'll set them up uh, the email and a simple three or four page website just to help them get going so that they can be found on the internet, have email to communicate effectively with people and be present and represented accordingly. Love it. Um, what are the three biggest nightmare scenarios for business owners on a tech level? Oh, that can change a lot really based upon the individual because I'm, I'm afraid of heights. You being in the Air Force, maybe you're not, but those things change. But uh, the ones that I see most frequently are viruses or disruptors of some, some kind, mm -hmm. you know, some intentional attack, like a virus or ransomware. Um, a bad employee is a frequent one that we oftentimes don't want to admit that we know. And uh, those guys who are so wrapped up in building their business or doing what they're passionate about, they don't know how to do the maintenance and the things that need to be done, the updates and so on, that keep the systems alive, safe, and working reliably. Okay, and then how important is it for business owners to create a prevention plan for their systems? Well, a prevention plan is awesome. It's necessary because it helps give you check boxes on what you're doing to keep your systems working and alive and supported and substantial, but that's only half the equation. Prevention is one thing, but you've still got to have a plan for when the prevention fails or it's overlooked or something is missed or something new comes along that that prevention plan wasn't written for. So you've got to have your recovery plan as well. Oh, okay. I never even thought about that. I knew about your prevention plans because you and I did one, but, but I've never, um, I haven't thought about recovery plans. That's a, that's a great well, point. We gave you part of one already, and that's your backup strategy. Right. Getting your system set up and backing up your information, that's a part of a recovery plan. So let's say I come to you and I say, hey, Daniel, um, I don't know what happened. I turned on my computer today, you know, and my, my managed network, and, and, and now I have a ransomware attack. Is it going to cost somebody more after the fact uh, to fix, like, a ransomware attack? Usually if they're not prepared with a recovery plan. Right. Yes. Because ransomware changes your files. <laughs> I've read some nightmare stories and I'm sure, I'm sure with all the stuff you've done, you know, you've seen some firsthand. Ooh. And so for, for our audience, a ransomware attack is where somebody hijacks your files, locks you out and mm -hmm. demands payment for them usually. Right. Can you expand on that, Daniel? Well, usually they encrypt your files so that you can't use them. Now, these can be your Word documents, your Excel spreadsheets, your QuickBooks company files, those things that are kind of relevant to you doing your business. Right. But once it's encrypted, you can't use it. Now, you pay them money, they're supposed to give you the key to decrypt it. Supposed to. Supposed right. to. I mean, right. we're not necessarily dealing with the most ethical of people, 
who create these ransomware programs and viruses, right? <laughs> right, right. It's like trusting so, a kidnapper. Right. So, you know, why risk it? As part of your prevention plan, have a good backup that's running and recent so that if you get hit with ransomware, you don't have to pay the buggers. We just restored a last night's backup and you're good to go. Yeah. At most, you've lost an hour or two of data entry and, and thought process creation of emails or messages, and you can recreate that shortly. Love it. Rather than having to recreate years, well, like for you, years of customized content. Yeah, I never, I never even thought thought of that route. Is um, you know all the stuff I have uh, that I've, I've spent all this time writing and designing. Um, so let's let's flip the script. Let's say a business owner uh, deals with a lot of customer files, some sensitive information. So maybe they're uh, an e-commerce store or a tax professional or somebody that's got like you know credit card information and stuff. Are they liable if there's anything that that happens, like as far as data theft or anything? Oh, they can be. Okay, so there's litigation possibly. Oh, yes. But, well, look at it this way. I'm giving you my credit card information for one purchase. Mm -hmm. And something happens and it's tracked back to you let somebody else have access to that credit card. And that somebody else spent thousands of my money. Created a headache and nightmare for me. Somebody's going to have to be held accountable for that. And if we can't find the bugger who actually stole the card, the government's going to come after the people who allowed it to be stolen. Yeah. And that's part of why cybersecurity insurance has become such a big market item. Good to know. Um, and I, I know that there's specialized, uh, there's specialized things that certain industries really have to have to think about as far as liability as well. So. Well, we've got HIPAA as an example. Yeah. That's the Health Information Protection Act or something. And it's, it's all about protecting your privacy and your medical information. But a lot of the same um, layers of obfuscation and security and requirements in HIPAA just make good common sense for anybody with using a lot of what's called PII personally identifiable information. I think attorneys could benefit from your stuff as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, divorce attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys, they deal a lot with what you have. Yeah. You know, what is your value? What is your address? What stuff do you have? What is your family, your dog's name? They're gonna have this kind of information. And a lot of uh, login, double check questions can the answers to can be found in these organizations and the information they have about you you know they might not have your your high school principal's name but they're going to be able to figure out roughly when you graduated and then get an online yearbook yeah <laughs> boom so now they know when and where you graduated they now know the principal's name and that's one of the questions that might be on your bank account or your 401k plan. <laughs> Very true. Um, so I want to share a quick anecdote, you know, first firsthand so that people can really understand the strength of what you do. So a couple of years ago, um, I had one of the nightmare scenarios, and this is when you and I had just uh, just met, and, and thank God we had, uh, you know, we interacted and you'd set up some things for me and trained me on some stuff. Because what happened was um, I had a computer at home that I was using to run my business, and I had a catastrophic system failure. And there were years of designs, there were client files, there were you know, documents, all kinds of stuff. And my computer was dead. And you and I attempted to do like a system restore, went through some of the steps. Um, your, you know, your training was very helpful, but the system was fried. But I didn't lose access to the data because you and I had set up a backup and recovery plan, which I used for my new computer. And then everything's been going well, but that scenario could have been a lot worse if I hadn't have met you. And so Absolutely. firsthand, I can attest to how good you are at what you do. And I feel like every professional out there and every entrepreneur and every business owner should have a consultant with a consultancy session with you so that they can have a backup plan because there are, there are more than one. 
Um, the one I really like that you do is the actual electronic managed monthly services where you're not only doing the scans for the systems, but you're, you're uh, diagnosing like system performance. You're looking at any type of unusual usage and then, you know, you're, you're just uh, keeping the system healthy. It's almost like being able to go to your mechanic every month and having your car checked out if you drive a lot. Um, no, actually, a lot of how that works is I've got that agent on your computer and it's watching what the machine is doing. It's watching how you use it. Yeah. Um, if you get sent uh, an email with a link in it that's uh, questionable, it's going to try and warn you not to click there. Or if you do, the browser is going to say, hey, this isn't a safe site. You really want to go here. Um, other parts of it, I get the, the uh, log files from your system, the event logs. So, you know, if your hard drive is starting to go bad, it's throwing errors that the system is going to show me, but not you. And I can then start saying, hey, let's step up the backups, make them a little more fuller, a little more frequent, because your hard drive is going to probably die in the next time frame. So that we know it's coming, we're prepared for it, and we can schedule a, sun a Saturday or Sunday where I can send you a hard drive, and then on that weekend, I can walk you through disassembling your machine and replacing it and restoring your data from 2,500 miles away. So you can use analytics to predict a hard drive crash? Yes. That's okay. You just taught me something today. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I, had, I had no idea. You know, I, I guess like if we're using the medical analogy, I guess that's like you're be, you being the doctor and I come in and I've got like, you know, high blood pressure and I'm shaking all the time and I'm having trouble sleeping and all this stuff. And you're saying, yeah, you're, you're, gonna have a heart attack here in about a couple months there buddy yeah <laughs> exactly I'm, yeah. I'm using analytics i'm using the log files or in your analogy the complaints of shakes and irritability and short breath you know all these things tell us details about the system health yeah you know i, I can be watching your system and you start complaining that it's just running slow sometimes mm -hmm. And so I check the log files and I say, oh, well, you've got 82 tabs open in Chrome. You've also got another 30 tabs open in Edge. You've got Outlook open, four different images open in an image editor. You know, you're really taxing your machine at that point. And then it's a matter of training Rob to work more efficiently. Right. And maybe upgrading the memory in the system so it can work a little faster and a little better. Perfect. Um, so let's give some value to the people that are tuning into this. Um, how can people improve their computer networks uh, pretty fast? What are some basic steps they can do? Well, one of the first ones is do your maintenance. Um, you know, I've, I've got little pads that I used to give out as a marketing thing and down at the bottom of it, there's uh, five or 10 little steps or uh, hints on things to do. Um, we don't need, one of them that a lot of people do today or think about is defragmenting their hard drive. Mm. Okay, great. We really don't have to do that so much today with Windows 10 and how it upgraded some aspects of, of data management on the drives, but it's still a good thing to do occasionally. Um, keep your antivirus up to date. Dude, that, that's like going to get booster shots. Yeah. It, it just protects. It, it's preventative, it's protection. Um, it, it, it's 101 little things right. that can matter and they all add up. I mean, you're a business owner. You, you've had that one man shop mindset of I've got to do it all. Mm -hmm. I don't have X or Y money to hire someone to help me with this. I can't afford a technician to come in and do this all the time. And you, as, you know as well as I do, that first time you hire someone to help you is exciting and terrifying at the same time because you're giving up some element of control of your business. Yeah. But as a business owner, You've got to take care of your tools, be it a content developer such as yourself or a carpenter, a framing carpenter. 
He's got to keep his saw tight and sharp, his hammer in good condition, and he's got to have it with him when he's working. Yeah. So one of the best things you can actually do is hire someone like myself, an MSP, a managed services provider, to take that headache off your shoulders. It does two things. It gives you someone to scream and yell at when you're stressed out that something's not working the way you want, Yeah. which helps your blood pressure. <laughs> Once you're done, it helps. But it also lets you focus and concentrate on what you do best. Let me do what I do best to help you grow and become what you want to be. I think that's probably the best thing people can do. And it's also the hardest thing for them to do. I think it's a great, great uh, summary. How can we find you online, Daniel? Uh, several ways, of course. Uh, Daniel at IndiesITDepartment.com. Mm -hmm. um, website by the same. I've even got a schedule button on there now for a free consultation call. So, you know, you've got questions, you want to meet, we'll talk, work it through. Uh, and I'm also here on Facebook, LinkedIn, several others. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have you and, and Kurt and several other people uh, in a great, tight knit network on social media that refer me all the time when people ask, hey, who's the best for this? Or how can I get this fixed? Who do I, who do I need to call? So it's great having that. And you know, if they forget to find my email address, they can at least come to you. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much, Daniel. Really appreciate this interview. And you gave some uh, just solid gold advice, man. Um, thank you again for your time. And I'll be sure and get this out there. And we will see you next time. Absolutely, Rob. Thanks a lot.